Grant Patterson, Chief Executive of EdCon, tasked with the gargantuan job of saving EdCon from going bust. The business now in the hands of the banks, and he's been hired by those banks to turn it around. It's going to cost some jobs. It's certainly going to cost some retail space. But how much does the Chief Executive of EdCon know about fashion? Does the CEO of a fashion retailer need to know anything about fashion? You're, a, you're an electrical engineer by training. Yes, and, and hopefully learned something in retail <laughs> over the last 20 years. Um, I, I, it would be preferable. Uh, you know, if, if, if I had grown up in the fashion industry, this job would be easier than it, than it is now. But um, EdCon is a multi-format group. So, you know, what I've done uh, along with the team and with my predecessor, Bernie uh, Brooks, by the way, who I understu understudied for nine months trying to learn the fashion industry as fast as I can, and he was a great teacher, uh, a real privilege to actually learn from him. Um, uh, what we've done is we've decentralized the business. So we now have a MD of Edgars and a team, and an MD of Jet and a team, MD of CNA and a team. And it's really important that the MD of Edgars and the MD of Jet grew up in retail and fashion retail and understand the business. I see my job as picking great leaders rather than anything else, but I've still studied up on it. By the way, I've been on a fabric course, I've visited lots of factories to figure out how garments are assembled. So I'm standing up and learning as fast as I can. Does this mean by decentralizing that you are bringing it up for sale? at some point in the future? It doesn't mean that I am doing it for that purpose, but it is a consequence of breaking it, of managing it by business unit, um, that it certainly would make it easier sometime in the future to sell. Um, I, I'm, the way I manage, the way I, I lead and, and operate, is I really want an individual always to have an income statement. And so that's the real reason I'm doing it. I want to be able to look in the MD of Edgar's eyes and say, how much profit do you make and, and Jet? But then you can incentivize the team at Edgar's, you can incentivize the team at Jet, you can incentivize the team in beauty and even within hope. And, and if you go and look at our income statement, and you don't have the information, but if you came and looked at our management accounts, you would immediately conclude the fundamental problem with the business is not the Edgar's and Jet stores, still very profitable those stores it's the overhead is too large and in specifically it is the IT overhead that's probably double what it should be and it is the logistics cost which are perhaps double what it should be but, but that is a great argument for consolidation and that's why people have consolidated for so many years and have run groups and have merged all of these back office functions the theory was there that that saved money you now splitting it all up and possibly incurring double costs. Isn't Correct. It? And so, no, no, I'm not splitting it up. What I'm doing is I'm, for the first time in Edgon's whole history, this is a core mistake made 15 years ago, is I'm charging ah. Edgar's and Jet for their share of IT and their share of logistics, and they're in shock at how much it costs. Um, what, what it, it's amazing. It's a good business lesson, by the way. What, what the management accounts of Edgar's do, Edcon does, is it puts logistics costs and um, IT costs and nets them of profit from financial services. And so really it's a cost that's just been sitting there hidden for a mm. long time. And those bare bones are really important to be able to rebuild the businesses. Well, yes, in fact, we've got a, it, it's good to have centralized IT and logistics for the reasons you've just mentioned. We must just make it managed hard. We must manage it to its cost. Down. Now, I understand that your predecessor, Bernie Brooks, was, was hired to list the business, was hired to take the company back to market. You mentioned at the beginning that this was a business that should never have been delisted in the first place. It was delisted, took on this 20 billion rands worth of debt, could never show, get rid of the debt burden. Why not simply say to South African investors, here, here, come along for the ride. There's risk involved, but come along for the ride. So, so if you're raising new money on the JSE, you have to pass a couple of tests. One of them is that you're self-sustaining for cash, uh, and which, this, we're uh, which we're not. And the second thing is you've got a stable set of accounts for at least three years. And we don't pass really either of those tests. Um, I also think you should, you know, you shouldn't list a business at at the end of its life if if that's the case. You know, while it's shrinking, I think we must stabilize it. We must give it some track record, get its accounts nice and clean. Um, I, I certainly think if we get through this phase. As the Edcon Group, we will certainly relist sometime in the future. I mean, and what is the time frame on that? I mean, shareholders, uh, and you, you described your shareholders earlier as not being the warm and fuzzy types. They want a result as quickly as possible. What is their time frame? Two, three years? How much time do you have? Yeah, I would say that the business has got to turn within the next 12 to 24 months. And by turn, I mean it's absolute bottom line profit, not adjusted for anything, not EBITDA. It's absolute profit has to turn uh, to show hope and faith that 
that perhaps what management says is true, which is this is a badly run business that needs to be fixed, as opposed to the other thing, which is maybe department stores are dead and the, the business is dead. Um, and in the South African economy in which you operate right now, a trimmed down business, if you were a betting man, I know you're not, um, you like certainty, you're an engineer by training. What odds do you give yourself in terms of pulling this off? I would give it, you know, maybe fifty-fifty. Um, you know, so so, and 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 I tell people that because I don't want to understa- understate the risk we're at. You know, it's just really, and and to be facetious, it's a couple of twenty-five-year-olds in their Excel spreadsheets decide whether or not we'll be refinanced or not. You know, it's a, um, all we got to do is get the sentiment wrong. All we got to do is get a bad element. Quite a, it's, the business is a, uh, is in high risk. At the and, and fashion is notoriously difficult. It's notoriously fickle. We've seen um, Woolies has misstep badly on fashion, not only here but in Australia as well. We've seen um, the big retail groups get this wrong. You only need one bad season and your tickets. Correct. Well, look, uh, in a business financed by equity, that's not true. Fashion is inherently a risky business, but. The, the fa- other fashion retailers all can survive for several years making mistakes. They just get into trouble. Yes. We can't do that. So one, we, we are reasonably conservative in our fashion. Uh, you know, what you haven't heard is, oh, Edgar's has messed up the fashion or Jet's messed up the fashion. We don't take big risks like that. We can't afford to. So we're a, a reasonably conservative fashion company. But the, 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 they finance by equity, we finance by debt. And we've got to get back to being financed by equity for us to live through the cycles. How do you make people watching this program tonight want to go back into a CNA? For so many people, you walk into a CNA, you don't walk out happy. You don't know what it is. You walk into an Edgar's, you don't walk out happy. Um, and retail is about satisfying customers' needs that they didn't even know they had. So interestingly, if, you know, if I go back to the business two years ago, and I was watching it closely two years ago to now, the, the, the offering has substantially improved. I think how great it, you know, so I think we've done, firstly, Bernie did a lot of good job on the fashion. I think if you go to an Edgar store and you actually feel good about yourself and the store, you'll find there's great clothing there. CNA these days is becoming a really, really good stationary retailer. So I think our challenge is to say to people, just give us a chance. You know, you may have this picture in your head. It may have been caused somewhat by the, all the bad news about Edcon, the group. It may have been caused by a personal experience with Edgar's Jet or CNA. But we really think we've improved it substantially. And I would just say to everyone, you know, if you really want to, don't be an armchair critic. Come to the store, shop us, and you'll find out for yourself. Grant Patterson, thank you very much indeed. Grant Patterson, the new chief executive at Edcon. I say new. He's been uh, gearing up for this role for some time. But the relaunch of Edcon, the new look trimmed down Edcon with the possibility, 50-50 chance, of a future. Good night.